Hello everyone, this is Mario, welcome back to my channel and welcome to stage 5 of the Tour de France 2019 in Pro Cycling Manager. Today the riders have a relatively short stage, only 167.9 km long. It's going to take them from saint dié des vosges to Colmar. It's a quite hilly stage, especially in the final half of it, with three uh, categorized climbs, two category 2 and one final category 3 climb close to the to the end of the stage so it's clearly not suited for sprinters but it will be suited for a rider like Julien Alaphilippe so as I try to do in stage three to win the stage with Alaphilippe I will try the same again today so let's hope I can do better than the third place I got with the French rider in that stage his main competitors today are, of course, uh, the world champion Alejandro Valverde and, of course, his big rival from the 2019 season, Jakob Fuglsang. So here we are, departing for the fifth stage of the Tour de France 2019. And, well, we are quite lucky because Julien Alaphilippe is having a plus three race day condition today. So it's going to be really helpful um, for him to try to win the stage. On the other hand, Enric Mas is having a minus two day. So yeah, even though I'm not trying to win the stage with him, and I don't really think he's going to struggle to overtake those uh, final hills near the end of the stage, it's really not that helpful. But I have to pay uh, attention with um, Enric Mas so he doesn't get dropped. Again, I'm not putting any rider in the breakaway group. Um, as usual, when I have the goal of winning the stage with a specific rider, I don't put any of them in the breakaway. Um, I could try to go for the KOM points, but I actually intend to win that classification with Alaphilippe, and probably he will be the one in the breakaway in the mountain stages uh, where he's surely going to lose some time for the GC favorites. So today we have the largest breakaway until now in this Tour de France. We have 10 men in the front group. They have four minutes over the peloton. And today we have the current mountain classification leader in this group. They are approaching the top of the Côte de Grandelbrook. Uh, about one kilometer now, and Bernard was the first one to launch the attack. Mark Waller is following, and then Johan Alfredo. Let's see if the current leader of the mountain classification gets the points here, and he doesn't. It's I think it was Mark Waller, the first one in this uh, classification. Yeah, he got two points, so he was the one taking the points there. So we are now also approaching the intermediate sprint. There are 10 riders in the front, so it's not going to be easy to get many points. Um, the first one in the peloton will only get uh, five points from this intermediate sprint, but still, let's try to take them with um, Elia Viviani. Let's attack now with Morco, and now sprint with Elia Viviani. Let's see if he can take the points. He will be the first one here. So really nice for Elia Viviani. So the riders in the breakaway are already on the category two climb of this day, the first one of the two category two climbs of the day. Um, I'm still not going to make any moves with Julien Alaphilippe um, at the moment, but I will want to keep him in the front of the peloton so that he doesn't get dropped already. Right now, in the breakaway group, it's Landagnus and Marco Aller fighting for the KOM points here. Let's see who is going to be the one taking them. The French rider seems to be the strongest, and he is the first one at the top. Then Marco Aller and Grelier, and Landagnus is the virtual leader of the KOM points uh, right now. So we are now on the Côte des Trois Epis. The breakaway riders still have a minute's lead over the peloton, um, but the pace is increasing. It's really hard right now. Um, whoa, I was pacing with Enric Mas. What? Why was I doing this? Oh, he wasted a bit of energy doing this. 
I hope I don't regret <laughs> having done this. Um, the climb is about to get steeper in the next few um, kilometers or meters. Let's try to push Alaphilippe a bit further to the front. He got dropped a bit. We have Kasper Asgren here. He's now going to be protecting Eric Maas. Let's maintain Julien Alaphilippe here. Let's not do anything that may be potentially stupid at this point of the stage. Um, Alaphilippe is still looking in good shape to try to take the stage win. I think I may increase the pace a bit with him in that category three climb, but, but not trying an attack because there will still be uh, quite a few kilometers to the end of the stage. And I may still have a chance of winning if I go to a sprint in a small group. So let's just try to recover a bit of energy now. So the pace is now increasing a lot. Andre Amador is pushing really hard at the front. He's followed by two AG Dazer uh, riders, Matthias Frank and Oliver Nassen. So we are starting the final climb of today's stage. Let's increase uh, the effort a bit now. And maybe, well, let's just try for the moment to stay with Alaphilippe here. We have Jack Haig attacking or pacing. He's just pacing at the front of the peloton. So I think I will try to pace a bit with Alaphilippe now. There are still almost 100 riders in this group. It's far too many. Should I try an attack? I really want to attack here. But they won't let me do that. And I might actually drop Enric Mas if I do. So yeah, I will follow my initial uh, strategy. Um, and Nat Nael Verani and Simon Geschke were still in the front. They are now about to be caught. So Alaphilippe is actually the third in this climb. But there were no points for him, only two points for the first rider here and one point for the second one. So yeah, maybe I will follow the will of Alejandro Valverde. He's attacking. Oh, I follow this will on the right moment. Alejandro Valverde launched an attack. Let's see. We are still 12 kilometers away from the finish. 25 riders in the front group. Enric Mas is still here. Let's put his effort on 99 to maintain position so he doesn't get dropped. Let's keep on the wheel of Valverde. He's one of the strongest favorites for um, the win today. Who else is around here? Is Peter Sagan here? Yes, Sagan is here. So yeah, he... He might easily take the stage, I guess. Maybe I should switch to Sagan's wheel. Can I do that? I don't know if I should. Well, let's keep with Valverde. Maintain this on Sagan. So using the energy gel now on Julien Alaphilippe. Let's keep on the wheel of Alejandro Valverde is still leading the group. Sagan is here now. Let's switch to his wheel. Let's follow Peter Sagan now. 2.5 kilometers to go. Can I do something here against Peter Sagan? He's the clear favorite, I think, from this group. One kilometer and let's launch the sprint. Can I take the win? No, it's going to be Peter Sagan winning the stage. And Alaphilippe is second. And I get another podium finish without taking the stage win. It's four podium finishes. Two with Elie Viviani, a second and a third place. And two with Alaphilippe, a second and a third place. So I just need to get a win with both of them to complete the podium finishes. So here is the replay of the final sprint. Peter Sagan was the clear favorite uh, from this group and he managed to take the win ahead of Julien Alaphilippe and Alejandro Valverde. 
the first win for the Slovakian former world champion Peter Sagan is wearing the Bora jersey now. Uh, it's been quite a long time since we have seen him in the Bora jersey, but it takes the win ahead of Alaphilippe and Valverde. In the GC, no changes. Egan Bernal still leading. Natnael Berane is the new leader of the KOM classification. He's going to be wearing the polka dot jersey in the next stage. After taking the win today, Peter Sagan is now the leader in the points classification. So he got his dear green jersey already after five stages and leads with 21 points over Elie Viviani. No changes in the young rider classification as well. Egan Bernal still leading ahead of Henrique Mas. And Team Minios is still the best ahead of Astana. So again, I was really close from taking the stage win, but uh, from a small 25 riders group, Peter Sagan was the clear favorite to take the stage win. I didn't manage to drop him in those climbs. He was too strong and managed to stay with the favorites. And in the final sprint was the clear favorite. I could have taken the stage win today, but only if Peter Sagan was not in this final 25 man group. So getting a second place here is not a bad result, but of course it's not the one I was hoping for. GC wise, um, Eric Marsh was the final man uh, with the same time as the winner of the stage. And some important riders did lose time. Richie Port and Vincenzo Nibali were one minute and nine seconds behind. Um, let's see who else. Nairo Quintana is already losing so much time in this Tour de France. Another two minutes and seven seconds today. TJ Van Garderen was here as well. Let's see who else. Mikel Landa was in the same group as Quintana. Daniel Martin. So many, many riders. Adam Yates as well. Many important riders losing time. Ilnur Zakarin. Right now, Enric Mas is already... 16th, I think it was 23rd before the start of this stage. He is still 55 seconds behind Egan Bernal. Vincenzo Nibali, of course, losing over a minute today, is dropped to 19th, 1 minute and 27 seconds behind. But it's possibly not critical for him. He is still well in reach uh, in the GC. Also, Richie Port losing over a minute today, but just over 1 minute and a half behind the leader. So it's not dramatic still for um, some of the riders, but others like Roman Bardet already almost three minutes behind, Ilnur Zakarin as well, Adam Yates over three and a half minutes behind, and Dan Martin over three minutes, Mikel Landa almost four behind. I think Nairo Quintana is even worse, actually. Yeah, Quintana is close to five minutes behind now. So some riders thought to be challenging for the GC in this race are already uh, far behind. So they are likely to be seen in breakaways in the mountain stages. And speaking about mountain stages, we have one in the sixth stage of the Tour de France. There are seven categorized climbs uh, in this one, three of which are category one climbs. So again, even though I didn't manage to take the stage win, although I was really, really close, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button. Also, leave a comment down below. Tell me what you think I should have done better with Julien Alaphilippe today to take the stage win. And also, if you enjoy my videos, please consider subscribing to my channel. I really value your support. It really means a lot. And I hope to see you all next time for stage 6 of the Tour de France 2019 in Pro Cycling Manager. Bye!